In this lecture, we are going to learn about timer functions in JavaScript. So in JavaScript, we have two timer functions, set timeout and set interval. And both of these timer functions are available on Windows object as its method. So let's talk about each of these two timer functions one by one and how we can use it. The set timeout function executes a callback function or evaluates an expression after a specified number of milliseconds. Let's understand this practically. So let's go ahead and let's call this set timeout function. Now, this set timeout function takes two mandatory arguments. The first argument is a callback function. Okay. And the second argument is time interval in milliseconds. So here, let's pass 3000 milliseconds. Now, when this set timeout function will be called, it will wait for this, you know, this 3000 milliseconds. And once this time interval is over, it will execute this callback function. And inside this callback function, we want, you know, we can write the logic which we want to execute after this time interval is over. So let's say we simply want to log a message in the console saying that your application has been submitted successfully. Okay, so let's say there is a user who is submitting a job application and the submitting process is taking three seconds. Okay, so once the form is submitted, that means once this time interval is over, we want to show this message to the user saying that your application has been submitted successfully. And before this, you know, before calling this set timeout function, let's use another console.log statement. And here, let's print a message. Please submit your application. Okay. So when we run this program, first of all, this message will be logged in the console. And after that, we are calling this set timeout function. And to this set timeout function, we have specified a time interval, time interval of 3000 milliseconds that means three seconds so this set timeout function will wait for three seconds and once this time interval is over once the three second is over it will execute this callback function okay so let's see that let's go ahead and save the changes so first this message has been logged and after three seconds you can see the message from this callback function has been logged in the console let me refresh the page again so this message has been logged first. Let's wait for three seconds. And after three seconds, this callback function got executed and it logged this message in the console. So this is how a set timeout function works. Now remember that once the time interval is complete, this set timeout function will execute this callback function only once. Okay, it will not execute it again and again after this given time interval. And remember that this set timeout function does not block the execution of next line of code. So for example, let's say after this set timeout function, we have another console.log statement. And here, let's say we simply want to log processing. Okay, so when this program will run, first of all, this message will be logged in the console. Then this set timeout function will be called. So this set timeout function, we have specified a time, inter time interval of three seconds. So this set timeout function will wait for three seconds. Now, this is not going to block the execution of next line of code. Okay. So while this set timeout function is waiting, the next line of code will get executed and this message will be logged. And once this time interval is over, this callback function will be executed. And from this callback function, we are logging this message in the console. So then this message will be logged. Let's see that. If I save the changes, you will notice that this message and this message has been logged. And after three seconds, once this time interval is over, this message has been logged in the console. So this set timeout did not block the execution of next line of code. Now, it is also possible to pass parameters to the callback function of set timeout function. Okay, so to this callback function, we can also pass some parameters. So let's say to this function, we want to pass two parameters job and location and let's use these two parameters inside this message so let's say your application for job and then let's use 
this job parameter and then let's say for location and then again let's use this location parameter okay and let's move it to next line so that it will be more readable so your application for job then the job name for location and then the location name has been submitted successfully now we need to pass values for this job and location parameter right and that we can pass as the third and fourth argument of this set timeout function so the set timeout function has two mandatory arguments the first argument is the callback function and the second argument is the time interval and rest of the arguments are optional and we can use the rest of the arguments to pass value for callback function parameter so here for the job let's say software developer okay and for location let's use this value london and then let's go ahead and save the changes and after three seconds you know this message has been logged your application for job software developer for location london has been submitted successfully so in this way we have passed parameter values to this callback function now let's do one more thing let's cut these values from here and let's put them in an array so let's create an array let's call it params and inside this params let's say we have two values this string value software developer and this string value london now we want to assign this value to job parameter and we want to assign this value to location parameter so for that we can use indexing okay so param of zero will store the first parameter and this should be params okay and params of one will store the second element with this let's go ahead and save the changes and the program should still be working okay so we have the same output now here we have used indexing but we can also use spread operator here right so on this params we can call or we can use this spread operator now what does this spread operator do it expands the element of an array into individual elements okay so these two elements of this params array they will be uh, expanded into individual elements and then this will be assigned this first element will be assigned to this job parameter and this element will be assigned to this location parameter if i go ahead and save the changes we should have the same output okay so this is how we can pass parameters to a to the callback function of set timeout function now this set timeout function also returns a value and that value represents the id for that timer so let's store that return value in a variable and let's call it timer okay so this set timeout function is going to return a an integer value and that integer value will be the id for this timer and to see that let's go ahead and let's log it in the console if i save the changes you can see an integer value has been logged here and this value is the id for this timer now using this id using this value we can also cancel this set timeout function and for that for canceling a timer we have a function called clear timeout and to this we need to pass the id of the timer so the id of this set timeout function is stored in this timer variable so let's pass this timer variable to this clear timeout function and now if i save the changes you will notice that this callback function did not get executed okay so three seconds has already passed but this callback function has not been executed this is because using this clear timeout we have cleared this timer okay so here we are clearing the timer okay so this was about set timeout function now let's go ahead and talk about 
set interval function. The set interval function executes a callback function or evaluates an expression again and again after a specified time interval. Let's understand this practically. So let's go ahead and let's call this set interval function. Now, just like set timeout function, this set interval function also takes two mandatory arguments. The first argument is the callback function, which we want to execute. And the second argument is a is the time interval. Now here, the difference between set interval and set timeout is that the set timeout function executes the callback function only once after a given time interval. But the set interval function executes a callback function again and again after a given time interval. Okay, so this function will be executed by the set interval again and again after each one second because here we are passing time interval as 1000 milliseconds which is one second so after each second this callback function will be executed by this set interval let's see that inside this callback function let's say we simply want to log the current date so let's create a variable let's call it now and to get the current date we can use the date constructor and to this since we want to get the you know current date and time we will not pass any parameters and now let's go ahead and let's log this date in the console so now and let's see what happens if i save the changes you will notice that after each one second the current date is being logged in the console okay so this set interval function is executing this callback function after each second because here we have passed time interval as time interval as one second. If I pass two second, then in that case, this callback function will be executed after each two seconds. Okay, so now you can see after two seconds, these callback functions are getting executed. So this is how set interval function works. Now this set interval function also returns a value representing the id of the timer so let's create a variable let's call it timer okay and the set interval will return an id for this timer let's go ahead and let's log it in the console so timer let's save the changes so here it has returned one as the id and now again we can use this id clear this interval I mean clear this timer and for that we have another method which is clear interval okay so to clear a timeout we have clear timeout method I mean clear timeout function and to clear the set interval we have clear interval function and here we need to pass the ID of the timer so we, we are storing it inside this timer variable now if I go ahead and save the changes you can see one is logged but now this callback function is not getting executed because here we have cleared this timer. Okay, so this was about the timer functions in JavaScript. We learned about two timer functions, set timeout and set interval. And to clear a set timeout timer, we have a method called clear timeout. And to clear a set interval timer, we have another method which is clear interval. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any question, feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.